For the first time since Nigeria's transition to civilian rule in 1999, an opposition party unseated the ruling party at the 2015 presidential election. The outcome of the election put doomsday prophets to shame as the chaos and unrest they predicted were averted when President Goodluck Jonathan of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, accepted defeat and congratulated his opponent, retired Major General Muhammadu Buhari of the All Progressives Congress, APC, even before the results were officially announced by the Independent Electoral Commission, INEC. Unlike Gambia's Yaya Jame, Cote d'Ivoire's Laurent Gbagbo, and Madagascar's Didier Ratsiraka, all of whom refused to hand power over after losing elections, President Jonathan set a standard for other African leaders to emulate. On May 29, 2015, Jonathan handed power peacefully to the new president. He had refused to toe the path of violence, demanding a re-election process or overturning the election results, which might have thrown the country into chaos or a military takeover. Although the former president is celebrated as an exemplary leader who loved his country and his people, this episode takes a look at why Goodluck Jonathan lost the 2015 presidential election. The 2015 presidential election in Nigeria, which was the fifth since 1999, marked a significant turn in the country's democratic history. Nigeria's electoral body in charge of conducting elections, INEC, registered 28 political parties, but only 14 parties submitted the names of their presidential candidates to participate in the election. However, the battle was actually between the incumbent president, Goodluck Jonathan of the People's Democratic Party, and the former military head of state, retired Major General Muhammad de Buhari of the All Progressives Congress. The APC was a coalition of three major opposition parties, the Action Congress of Nigeria, ACN, the All Nigeria People's Party, ANPP, and the Congress for Progressive Change, CPC. A faction of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, led by Governor Rochas Okorocha of Imo State, would also join. Opposition to President Jonathan's presidential ambition was fierce. It began with challenging his eligibility to contest, having served two terms in office. Fortunately, the court ruled in his favor, stating that the circumstances in which Jonathan became president could not be counted as a term in office. Next was the increase in terrorist attacks in the country. Boko Haram insurgents were relentless as they attacked villages, kidnapping and raping women and killing men. Also, Five serving governors alongside one-third of members of both the Senate and House of Representatives defected from the PDP to the APC. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo was not left out of the debacle as a letter he had written to President Jonathan challenging his candidacy was leaked. He also resigned from the PDP, tore his party card and described the party as useless. These did not deter President Jonathan as he went ahead to win the party's presidential primaries on December 11, 2014 at the party's national convention. He retained his vice president, Namadi Sambo, as his running mate. Meanwhile, the APC also held its national convention, producing Muhammadu Buhari as its presidential candidate and Professor Yemi Oshibajo as his running mate. In preparation for the elections, INEC carried out a continuous voters' registration exercise to build on the 2011 Biometric Voters' Register, which began in 2014 across the country. 
The electoral body also introduced the permanent voter's card and electronic card reading system to significantly reduce electoral malpractices such as fraud, vote buying, multiple of fake registration and voting, and inflating figures. By February of the next year, when the elections were scheduled to hold, only 76% of the populace had been issued their PVCs, and this led to the postponement of the election for six weeks to enable more voters to obtain their PVCs. Another reason for INEC's postponement of the elections was the military's withdrawal of its support for the February 14 election date and to improve the security situation which yielded results as most areas being controlled by Boko Haram were recaptured. The D-Day arrived and voters trooped out in their numbers to various polling units to choose the next set of leaders at the National Assembly and the next president of the country. PVCs and biometric card readers tackled the problem of electoral fraud, though there were minor technical issues with the card readers in some polling units. Surprisingly, the expected violence was non-existent and at a bare minimum. Thus, the election has been described as one of the most successful, credible and peaceful elections the country has ever had. Earlier, President Jonathan had signed the Accord Agreement with other candidates to ensure peaceful conduct by the electorates and the parties during and after the elections. This way, national interest was placed above that of self. Although hiccups in the election include the late arrival of electoral officers and election materials to polling units, the number of petitions rejecting the results of the election was low compared to previous elections conducted in the country, especially the 2011 elections. After due calculations of the results, on April 1, 2015, INEC Chairman Professor Atahiru Jaga announced Muhammadu Buhari as the winner of the presidential election. While the APC polled 53.96% of the total votes cast, the PDP polled 44.96%. The APC also won a majority of the governorship elections and seats in the National Assembly, bringing the dominance of the PDP over the national legislature to an end. Remarkably, this was the first time since the beginning of the Fourth Republic in 1999 that power would alternate between political parties at the national level. In a show of excellent sportsmanship, President Jonathan admitted defeat and congratulated the newly elected president on his victory. So many reasons abound suggesting why the tide of favor turned against the erstwhile lucky man. President Jonathan's administration had been rife with corruption allegations, Boko Haram insurgency and banditry, high rate of youth unemployment, religious conflict and underperformance in different sectors of the economy. First was Jonathan's laxity in fighting corruption, which has been a perennial problem in Nigeria since colonial times. However, President Jonathan was not firm in his fight against it during his administration, and he seemed to turn a blind eye to the looting and corrupt practices which took place. Nigerians had been groaning and were utterly dissatisfied with the government. This allowed the opposition to criticize every move made and promise that things would be handled differently if they were to be given power. The APC harped on the failure of the government to fulfill campaign promises and convinced the electorate of the need for a change. In fact, that was a slogan used to win the hearts of the people. Change. Another supposed reason for President Jonathan's defeat was a low turnout of voters compared to the 2011 elections. 
This was as a result of heightened insecurity, especially in the northern part of the country, due to Boko Haram attacks, and people were also afraid for their lives, thinking the outcome of the election, if not favorable to either party, could lead to riots and killings. Some also believed that their votes do not count, as the results were already known beforehand, so they did not vote at all. The PDP's internal crisis also contributed to Jonathan's loss at the polls, and it is very likely that some members may have worked against the interest of the party during the election. There were claims of a purported agreement allegedly signed by President Jonathan, stating that he would not run in 2015, but he denied such claims and insisted on contesting. This invariably weakened the party as some leading figures made their way to opposition parties. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo, who was a major player in the PDP, also caused a scene when he tore the party's card and resigned from the party. The PDP also lost control of some key states due to the defection of their governors and so could not control the electoral processes there. An example is a fiasco that played out in River State, where the returning officer, vice-chancellor of the Federal University of Petroleum Resources, Professor John Etu Efeoto, couldn't correctly read the election results, which he had written himself. River State Governor Rotsimi Amichi accused the PDP of rigging elections in the state and called on INEC to cancel the results. Amechi was previously in PDP but had defected to APC. While launching a book on his tenure in office, My Transition Hours, Jonathan stated that former governors of the PDP who defected to the APC because they were blinded by ambition cost him the election. He also blamed the northern leaders who wanted to return power to the north for sabotaging his re-election bid and the barrage of fake news that put him in a bad light. One cannot overlook the hate campaign on which Jonathan hinged his presidential ambition. This also turned out to be his undoing. Valuable time was spent discrediting the opposition instead of building on his achievements since attaining office and revealing more plans for the future. According to the then National Secretary of the PDP, Olisa Metu, President Jonathan's hate campaigns against Buhari denied the electorate the opportunity to be made aware of the good intentions of the PDP and made the latter quite popular with the masses. Thus, their hate campaign backfired. Most of the attacks were championed by his wife, Patience Jonathan, then governor of Ekiti State, Ayo Fayoshi, and Femi Fani Kayode, who was a spokesperson for Jonathan's campaign organization. Muhammad Buhari's previous rule as head of state also gave him an edge over Jonathan. He was seen as a no-nonsense man compared to Jonathan, who was viewed as a pushover and clueless. This was reflected in Buhari's campaign message, where he promised to fight and eradicate corruption and he won the hearts of Nigerians who were desperate to experience the change he promised. Although President Jonathan had declared publicly while campaigning that he would only hand over power to a person younger than himself, he handed over to Muhammadu Buhari, who was 15 years older than him. His decision was seen as not only an honorable one, but also set a precedent for other African leaders to emulate. On one hand, Jonathan's supporters were traumatized and believed that he should not have given up without a fight. But on the other hand, his actions were applauded because a post-election crisis was averted. Nigeria was saved from the brink of a catastrophe which would have plunged the country into war and her democracy was consolidated. 
Jonathan's actions raised the bar for a peaceful democratic transition and set a new standard for African leaders who are noted for always refusing to relinquish power. During his concession speech, the former president, who declared the election free and fair, said he considered defeat without a fight because he wanted to entrench the country's democracy. He added that his commitment to the protection of lives and investments of Nigerians, their assets and the economy, foiled his decision which would avert the looming crisis. President Goodluck Jonathan even encouraged the PDP to celebrate and not mourn. Let's have a quick recap of the reasons why President Goodluck Jonathan lost the 2015 presidential election. Jonathan's eligibility to contest was challenged, having been sworn in twice as president. The increase in Boko Haram insurgency in the country contributed to his defeat. His body language in the fight against corruption, seen as tolerating, was used as a tool to smear him during the campaigns. The defection of some PDP governors and many lawmakers in key states such as Kano and Rivers to the opposition party APC weakened his re-election bid. The attacks by his loyalists on Buhari created more sympathy for the retired general. The popularity of Buhari in the north and the desire of the northern leaders to get power back to the region. And finally, the low turnout of voters compared to the previous presidential election in 2011. <music> 